Hi friends, welcome to another video. In this video, we are going to talk about NAT Gateway. A virtual NAT is a fully managed and highly resilient network address translation service. So it is a NATing service available to you, which basically helps you to configure outbound connectivity to the internet. Okay. And it basically creates this outbound connectivity using a static public IP assigned to it. So you use this service to create an outbound connection and it uses a static public IP address to configure that connection. It helps you to facilitate outbound connectivity from your subnet and it supports source natting or snatting for your subnet, which basically means if you have a bunch of private IPs and you're connecting on certain ports, these are translated into certain public IPs and certain ports for you. So if you have a VM deployed in your environment and that VM needs to talk to the internet, it will basically use this static public IP address to communicate over the internet. Now you can either have a single IP address or a bunch of public IP addresses, or you can use something called as a prefix, a public IP prefix. If you go with public IP prefix, you can get up to 16 IPs assigned to you. But when you get these IPs, all those IPs are used for uh, your outbound communication. It's not like you can only use one IP or you don't want to use a certain set of IPs. You can't do that. All the IPs will be used for outbound connectivity. You can see that in the next slide. So public IP prefix is used. All IPs of the entire public IP prefix are consumed by the NAT gateway. So basically, this is a device which helps you to communicate to the internet and it basically helps you to configure outbound connections. Now, when I talk about outbound connectivity, there are quite a few services or options you have for outbound connectivity. So let's look at the first option. Let's say you have a VM deployed in a subnet in a VNet and it only has a private IP address. Even if you have a VM with a private IP address, you can also con you can basically have an outbound internet connectivity by using a virtual public IP assigned to that VM. Where do you get this public uh, IP from? This is dynamically allocated by Azure. So by default, even if you have a VM which has a private IP address assigned to it, it can communicate to the internet by using the virtual IP which is automatically assigned to the VM. So th this is one way to have an outbound communication. Now. Let's say you have another VM. This is your jump host. This VM, I've, I've assigned a public IP to it. So if you assign a public IP to this workload, all the outbound and inbound communication is going to happen over this public IP. So if you assign a public IP to a VM, that VM will be used to have this outbound and inbound communication. So, if, so we are using this jump host to connect over the internet. And from this jump host, if I want to connect inbound to this VM, I can RDP into this VM from here. So this is one option available to you. The second option that we see over here is, let's say if I have a NAT gateway deployed. So all my inbound communication is going to happen depending on what public IP I have assigned, but all my outbound communication from this VM one, which is in subnet one, is going to go over this NAT gateway. So if you assign a NAT gateway, it either uses a single public IP address or a prefix attached to it and using those uh, public IPs or public IP prefixes, it is able to create a communication to the internet from here. So all your outbound communication is actually going to happen over the NAT gateway, but all your inbound communication can happen over a public IP that you have created or attached to a VM or you have a load balancer attached, which can help you facilitate this communication. So when you attach a NAT gateway, it basically means all your outbound communication is going to go through that NAT gateway and this NAT gateway is actually attached to your subnet. So if I want to attach it, I have to associate it with this subnet. Now there are some things that you need to keep in mind whenever you're creating these connections. So your NAT gateway cannot be attached to a subnet where you have a basic load balancer deployed or you have a basic public IP deployed, or if you have a IPv6 address space assigned over here, or you have an existing NAT gateway deployed. So currently it doesn't support IPv6, plus if you have an existing NAT gateway, you can't associate another NAT gateway with that. So it means you can only have one NAT gateway per subnet. You can't have multiple NAT gateways 
associated with the same subnet. But one NAT gateway can be associated with multiple subnets. Keeping in mind all these prerequisites are met. Also, there is another thing you cannot have a VPN gateway deployed in the same subnet. So your virtual network gateway should also not be deployed in the same on uh, uh, same subnet. If it is deployed, you will not be able to connect it to NAT gateway. So these are a few things that you need to keep in mind whenever you're deploying these solutions. Now, if I talk about the overall flow, just to elaborate this flow again, so you can have coexistence of inbound and outbound communication when you configure a NAT gateway. So in this, you have two subnets. In this diagram, you can see you have two subnets, subnet A and subnet B. All of your outbound communication is going to go through this NAT gateway because this NAT gateway is attached to both the subnets. So you can either have public IPs assigned or a prefix assigned to your NAT gateway and all your communication to the Internet is going to happen via this NAT gateway. Now, all my inbound communication is going to happen either via load balancer. So I have a standard load balancer deployed and I'm able to connect over the Internet to this standard load balancer and all my outbound communication is again taken care of by this NAT gateway. Whenever you associate a NAT gateway, all your outbound communication is go, going to go via the NAT gateway. Or I can have a public IP assigned to the VM and I can connect inbound and outbound using that public IP to my VM. So either I can have a single public IP or a load balancer assigned in order for my inbound communication, but all my outbound communication is going to happen via the network address translation device available to us. No, this is an intelligent device and it is able to detect the flow of traffic. So you should be aware about that. Now, in terms of performance, a NAT gateway, one NAT gateway can support 50 GPS of throughput. It can support up to 50,000 concurrent corrections per public IP. And all of these endpoints are to the Internet. Either it can be a TCP or UDP endpoint. Total number of concurrent connections that a NAT gateway can have is up to 2 million. NAT gateway can process up to 1 million packets in normal circumstances, but if you have high amount of traffic going to the NAT gateway, it can process up to 5 million packets per second. So you can see it can scale really well for your high demand workloads. In terms of scalability, a single NAT gateway can have up to 16 IP addresses assigned to it. And one IP address can have 64,512 SNAT ports assigned to it and can scale up to 1 million SNAT ports if there is huge demand on it. So it is a highly scalable and very good performance you can get with this device. Now, why would you want to use this NAT gateway and not go with, let's say, solution like a load balancer? So NAT gateway basically dynamically allocates your SNAT ports. That is the major difference between a load balancer and how a NAT gateway works. In case of a load balancer, what you do is you are assigned a set of pre-allocated outbound SNAT ports. So let's say this is my VM1. It is assigned certain number of ports. Similarly, VM2 will also be assigned or pre-allocated certain number of ports. And likewise, you will see a lot of VMs assigned pre-allocated outbound SNAT ports. The issue with this configuration is Certain VMs will have more connectivity to the Internet. Whereas other VMs will not have too much connections to the Internet, so they are lightly utilized, whereas some VMs will be heavily utilized, utilizing all the ports assigned to it. Because of this, a lot of port wastage is there because these are these have to be pre allocated and if they are not used, they are just there, right? You're not using them at all. Whereas if you talk about SNAT or if you talk about the virtual NAT, in case of virtual NAT, the SNATing is on demand. So this SNAT device is automatically going to allocate the outbound SNATing port to you. So if one of the VM requires too many ports, more ports will be assigned to that workload. Whereas if other VM is not requiring too many ports, only the ports that are required by the VM will be allocated to it on demand. Because of this on demand allocation of the ports, it becomes really easy for you to scale your workload and your ports are not also um, underutilized. So you, it's not like you'll have any performance issue with this kind of a configuration. So on demand SNATing with virtual NAT is a preferred method for connectivity rather than going with a load balancing solution for the uh, outbound scaling. 
So this is all about the theory. Now let's look at some demos on it. So what I've done, I have created a bunch of VMs exactly aligning to the diagram that we were seeing. So if I go back to the diagram, so what I've done, I've created a, this v, Windows VM one and this VM only has a private IP address assigned. So if I go to the Azure portal, I can see this Windows VM one and this VM only has a private IP assigned. So you can see it only has this 10.2.0.4 private IP assigned. Now, in order to connect to this VM, I'm connecting to my jump host first, okay? And this jump host has a public IP assigned. So if I go back over here to my jump host, this has a public IP assigned, which is 4.222.230.200. So I'm connecting to the jump host. From the jump host, I'm going to the Windows VM in the backend. So if you want to see this, I can see I'm connected to my jump host and from that jump host, I'm connecting to my backend VM. The IP of my backend VM is 10.2.0.4. And if I do, what is my IP? I'm getting this random public IP assigned to me. Okay. So when you configure a VM with a private IP address, it is assigned a random public IP uh, by Azure. You don't have to worry about the outbound connectivity in case of this configuration. Whereas if you see the, in the other configuration where I have a jump host, I have a public IP assigned 4.227.230.200. If I see this, if I minimize this other VM, you'll see if I do what is my IP, same IP address. So what you see over here, so what you see over here, you also see it over here. So same IP address is actually assigned for inbound and outbound communication in case of jump host. Now, if you look at the other use case where you have basically a NAT gateway deployed. So what do you need to do? First, you need to create a NAT gateway. How do you go about creating a NAT gateway? So you go to a NAT gateway and you click on create. On this NAT gateway, you define the resource group where you want to deploy the NAT gateway solution. You define the gateway name. So I'll call it NAT gateway one. You define the region in which you want to deploy it. And you define the zone. If you want to make it highly available, you will define a specific zone as well. I can configure TCP idle timeout anywhere from four minutes to 120 minutes. So how long do you want to keep the TCP session in life? Four minutes is going to be the minimum amount and up to two hours you can keep the TCP session in life when you're creating these outbound connections. Then you go to outbound IP. In outbound IP, I can create a single IP. So I can call it NAT IP. And you can see this is a standard skew which is assigned to it and a static IP is always assigned. You don't get a dynamic or basic allocation in this case. Plus, if I want, I want to create a prefix. I want multiple public IPs to be assigned. I can create a new public prefix and I can call it NAT prefix. And if you see, I can have standard IPs which are assigned, static IPs which are assigned, Plus, I can get 16 IP addresses, 8 IP addresses, 4 IP addresses, or 2 IP addresses. So depending on my requirement, I can get all of these IP addresses. Once you're done with it, you associate it with the subnet, and you select your subnet, uh, your virtual network, and your subnet. When you select your subnet, you have to make sure your subnet doesn't have any of these. So you should not have like a, a load balancer with a basic SKU, public IP address with basic SKU, IPv6 address space, existing NAT gateway or a virtual network gateway. So just like we talked about some prerequisites, you have to make sure these resources are not deployed on your NAT gateway when you configure it. So once you click on review create, so you go to review create and you create it, you will see a NAT gateway device deployed like this. And if I go to this NAT gateway device and see the outbound IP for this NAT gateway device, you can see the IP assigned to it is 13.68.137.167. And what I've done, I've associated this with this subnet, which is your NAT solutions VNet and the default subnet assigned over here, which is the subnet for my VM, which is VM1. If I go to VM1, you can see the subnet assigned for this VM1 is NAT solutions VNet and the default subnet. So if I go back to this VM, if I RDP into this VM, and if I do, what is my IP? What is the IP we are getting? 
13.68.137.167. This is exactly the same IP that you have for your NAT gateway. So you see my NAT gateway has this IP 13.168. Uh, sorry, 13.68.137.167. Same IP you're also getting over here as well. So now all of my outbound communication is actually going to happen via this NAT gateway. So that's all about NAT gateway. I hope to see you in the next video.